Permanent anarchism is impossible in this universe. Both anarcho-capitalists and anarcho-socialists, if they become radical, might want to force their, their ideology on others. Anarchism only exists in the mind. A permanent anarchical society could ironically only exist by force. There will always be force and power and authority. And there will always be regulations on free exchange. So deal with it. And there will always be people who want to force their different ways on others. There will always be nefarious motivations that people have where they want to, people to change according to their ways. The radicalization of these uh, anarchist ideologies is why many anarcho-capitalists become fascists today. Uh, you are a atheist libertarian YouTuber. Uh, you got one or two more adjectives. I watched your channel trailer. You had a few more adjectives for yourself. Yeah, um, atheist libertarian YouTuber, anarcho capitalist asshole sometimes. I'm psyched to have you on because your videos are just great. You're clear to the point, funny. Uh, I love what you're doing. Recently, I've garnered some attention over a statement I made on Twitter. That statement being, I might be a fascist. 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 You're a libertarian through and through, fair to say? Yeah, that's pretty fair to say. You know, just leaving people alone, you know, just pursuing your own self-interest, non-aggression, you know, minding your own business, basically just a live and let live attitude. This is a very juvenile and simplistic understanding of what it takes to create a libertarian society. So you're probably wondering how an alliance between fascists and libertarians would be possible or even considerable. This isn't about convincing the left to change their ways anymore, okay? We are well beyond the point of please no steppy, all right? This is about unifying a populist right-wing majority against you so that you and your political representatives and your corporate and academic institutions will be subjugated to the survival of Western civilization whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Theory of hoppy and physical removal. The greatest lie that leftists ever sold free societies is the idea that democracy is a legitimate and effective means of peaceful conflict resolution among conflicting ideologies. The black shirts saw themselves as the front line against the socialist threat. You could not really be a regular member if you were in the right age group without being part of this militia. Now, in Italy, the black shirts were the basic core members of the party. This was a kind of special party army or party militia. Ovadza well, played his part by helping to destroy trade union offices in Turin. Radical fundamentalists, anarcho-capitalists, basically, will be like, be an anarcho-capitalist or be forced to leave, you commie statist. And radical fundamentalist anarcho-socialists would go like, be an anarcho-socialist or be forced to leave, you fascist pig enemy. In either an anarcho-socialist or anarcho-capitalist utopia that has become radical, people who preach a different ideology would basically have to be silenced in order to uphold the utopia permanently. And this effectively gets rid of free speech and the anarchical aspects of their ideologies. This is also why you even have people ironically calling themselves anarcho-monarchists, as if instituting a king would leave you with freedom. You can do this with any ideology though. Yes, even democracy. You become radical enough, and then you might wish to ban, expel, or even imprison people who espouse a non-democratic ideology. This would effectively get rid of the democratic rights of these people, but then at the same time uphold the democracy in name and title only. The only other way would be to perpetually teach and brainwash every generation to believe in the same ideology society-wide. But then it wouldn't really be anarchic and voluntary, would it? You would basically at least have to have a hierarchy of parents or teachers who preach the ideology of either anarcho-capitalism or anarcho-socialism. So what if some of these children think differently though, and grow up teaching and convincing others to abandon anarcho-capitalism, and institute a state, and police systems, and taxes, or even a biblical system of government? What will the anarcho-capitalist utopia then do?
Will they organize a central task force to surveil and expel such rebels? You see, at this point, it wouldn't really be voluntary or anarchic anymore, would it? Expelling someone who lives in an anarcho-capitalist society but doesn't believe in the ideology would basically mean that you would have to take away his business, his relations, his uh, land maybe, to expel him from the society, from the area where you have this anarcho-capitalist voluntary so-called system. And this would mean you would have to violate the basic principle of anarcho-capitalism, the NAP, or the non-aggression principle. You would basically have to override his property rights, his uh, right to his own person where he wants to live, in his own land, because this, this is the only way you could protect your society from if he's like a socialist or a communist in his mind, if he believes in that ideology. And if he starts spreading it to other people voluntarily, who voluntarily listen to him and start getting convinced by him. You see, some boundaries would have to be drawn eventually. Or otherwise, the utopian society would disintegrate and just lead to some new pockets of state authorities or people being made or making themselves authorities. Some oppressive because of the sinful nature of man, and others may be less oppressive. But this phenomenon of using force to preserve a given ideology is interestingly similar to biblical laws against apostasy, false prophets and proselytizers for other religions. And even the Islamic Quran took these laws as well. If enforced, this would remove any challenge to the status quo. It's just that anarcho-capitalists and anarcho-socialists claim to be for freedom, the voluntary will of every individual, or no hierarchies. Yet these ideologies are highly unlikely to exist in a territory without any authority. So therefore the term anarcho is really, it really doesn't work permanently in a society without authority. Therefore authority is simply part of the creation we currently live in. And anarcho ideologies are simply utopias, which don't work. And Islamists, Democratists and others who are fundamentalists in their ideologies and with authority are fighting to preserve their ideologies are simply fighting to preserve false ways and status quos instead of the true ways of God.